Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And starting with live pictures of GM World Headquarters in downtown Detroit, today the automaker submitted a counteroffer to the UAW. The union was quick to respond with just one week to go before the deadline. UAW President Sean Fain called the offer insulting and said, quote, the clock is ticking. Stop wasting our members' time. Tick tock. Thanks for joining us here for the news at 5 o'clock. I'm Kimberly Gill. And I'm Damon Fernandez in for Devin Skillian. There are multiple new developments in these critical negotiations with just seven days to go before the deadline. This is Editor Rod Maloney is here with us now. Rod Fain not letting up on this tough talk that we keep hearing from and, him. And it's only going to get tougher, it looks like, as we're a week out. Sean Fain has said all along he's not going to put up with a lot from the automakers, like waiting until the last minute, hoping the deadline pressure will lessen the cost to them. He told me Monday that they needed to get down of business and slowly things are starting to move forward. Sean Fain, well, he's saying not so much. There's a lot of ground to cover in a very short amount of time to prevent a strike. General Motors today made public its economic counteroffer, the company proposing for every employee a $5,500 ratification or signing bonus, making Juneteenth an additional paid holiday that makes between 16 to 18 days off each year of the four-year deal. For top-tier employees, a split wage increase. For the first two years, 5% wage hikes each year for a combined 10%. In years three and four, a 3% lump sum payment each year. In all, they're offering a 16% wage increase, falling way short of the 40% that UAW President Sean Fain is demanding. But for in-progression employees, a 56% wage hike is offered for temps a 20% increase. Also for in-progression employees, two steps removed to get to the top tier. The company finally adding that a $6,000 one-time inflation recognition payment and a $5,000 inflation protection bonus as a quasi-cost-of-living adjustment is added to the package. GM put out this video with President Mark Royce today, saying, Our competition is fierce, but I am confident that we have what it takes to win and win together. And that's why we need a fair contract that both rewards our employees and protects the long-term health of our business. UAW President Sean Fain immediately tweeting out his angry response, reading in part, GM has come to the table with an insulting proposal that doesn't come close to an equitable agreement for America's auto workers. GM either doesn't care or isn't listening when we say we need economic justice at GM by 11.59 p.m. on September 14th. The clock is ticking. Stop wasting our members' time. Tick tock, end quote. Now, Ford gave the UAW its counter offer, offer last week. Sean Fain blasted it equally as harshly as he did the GM one. Ford's likely to give something new tomorrow. And if you want to know more about the details of what Ford has already given, we have them on ClickOnDetroit.com. It's really surprising, Rod, how these companies are responding so publicly. Mm -hmm. Did they say anything else about the situation? Well, yeah, they did. In fact, uh, Ford came out today and they started talking about the fact that they're giving about 8,000 of its members more money. Mm -hmm. And that started on Labor Day. That's something new. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we're hearing from sources now that Ford is going to have another counter offer to deal with all of that that Sean Fain said about theirs uh, and we'll have that tomorrow and he's likely to be on Facebook live again tomorrow awesome. afternoon and we'll yeah. definitely be watching for right. that and, and the deadline seven what we got, it's seven, seven uh, it's from tonight it's 11 59 a week from tonight from, from tonight okay thanks Rod. Rod we'll see you at six thank you all right our other top story tonight startling green light camera footage played in court today showing how a Detroit homicide developed from start to finish. Yeah it even includes a mystery woman who provided the gun. Let's get over to Sean Lay to help walk us through that video. Hey Sean. Damon, Kimberly, let's get right to it. Judge King, Kenneth King at 36th District Court saying in his opinion it's a clear cut case of premeditated murder all caught on camera. Video played inside 36th District Court Judge Kenneth King's courtroom shows all of us from start to finish how disputes start, how many times deadly decisions are made as opposed to de-escalating intense situations. Green light cameras capturing 34-year-old Ricardo Williams arguing with 32-year-old Desmond Nelson, where eventually the cameras capture Nelson being shot dead. It happened July 23rd at a gas station on McNichols in Detroit. Judge King describing the sense was shooting this way. I don't think there's a clear definition of first degree murder premeditated if I've ever seen 
But where did Williams get a gun in the middle of an argument? A woman in yellow known as Blossom gets out of a car, gets a gun out of a trunk, and gives it to Williams. Williams telling DPD he never had a gun during the argument, and the woman he only knows as Blossom was there to hand him a gun. Listen, Blossom, she's already in trouble because she's not supposed to have a gun at all, and she knows that she's okay with that, okay? Because we have her on video getting a gun out of the trunk of the car. Back here live, following this very closely, the woman has no connection to the argument, but provided a gun allegedly to commit this murder. This case has been heading, they're now being moved on to trial. The woman in yellow with the gun, we're told, will also be charged. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4, back to you. Wow, Sean, so much to unpack there. Thanks. All right, everybody, here we go. It's been 222 days since the Lions last played in an NFL game. That ends in a little more than three hours from now, right here on Local 4. And now take a look at a live picture from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. It's known to get rather rowdy over there. In fact, fans have been so loud. Back in 2014, they set a Guinness World Record. After all this time, it's great to say football is back right now. And this year, the Detroit Lions are in the spotlight kicking off the season. That's right. We've got you covered from multiple angles tonight with multiple crews on the ground in Kansas City. Jamie Edmonds live outside Arrowhead Stadium, staking out the team's arrival. We'll get to Jamie in just a moment. But we're going to start with our coverage with Bernie. He's live inside the stadium. Bernie, so much anticipation leading up to this game. It sounds like they're practicing the anthem, too. Well, I, you're joining us just in the middle of the rehearsal for the national anthem. So if I had a hat on, I would take it off, obviously. But it is the Lions Chiefs here tonight. The question is, Travis, Kelsey, will he play or won't he play? Uh, sources are saying that the Chiefs are going to work him out before the game, and they'll make that decision at game time. Meanwhile, the Lions still haven't arrived. We have cameras there waiting, and when they do, we'll bring you that. Well, as you know, this Lions team has been built from the ground up, and the architect of this rebuild, General Manager Brad Holmes. We talked with him about putting this team together. It was well known that we kind of took it down to the studs there, and, um, you know, we had a... OC change, uh, offensive line was pretty beat up. Um, you know, we just didn't have a lot of weapons around him. And and I give a kid a lot of credit. He, he, he took it. He didn't point any fingers. He didn't make any excuses. He's very um, calm, cool, collective, um, you know, but he's he's been through a lot. And, you know, um, he's just the tough. And I've always thought that of him, even when he came out of Cal. Of course, he's talking about Jared Goff, who's going to lead the Lions offense tonight. A lot more from Holmes on the pregame show. That starts at 630. But right now, let's find out how Lions fans are doing outside the stadium. And with that story, here's Jamie Edmonds. Hey, Jamie. Hey there, Bernie. That's right. I'm outside Arrowhead Stadium where when my cameraman and I showed up, we saw a ton of Honolulu blue and silver everywhere you look. And these Lions fans are pumped. Take a look at the video we got. This is earlier. Not only are Lions fans here in mass, they are pumped. They are ready. And here's something new that you don't hear every day. They're confident. They feel the Lions made the correct moves in the offseason to make this team a playoff team. And who do we see today but, of course, Crackman himself. He says this year feels different to him, too. I'm loving it. I love Dan Campbell. I love what's going on with Brad Holmes, Chris, the whole entire Lions organization, Sheila Hamp. I mean, these, it's finally, it's here. I believe this will be going on a while. We're going to have a great coach. I mean, the Lions right now in Kansas City is crazy here. There's fans everywhere. This is my first You've time. You've never seen it like this with Lions fans everywhere? Not like this. In KC, first game. I mean, this is, it's, it's so live. Okay, and the vibe out there, it's where the RVs park, it's where all the tailgating is, is over there. If it feels a little subdued, it's because we're waiting for those team buses. Melvin, flip around just for a second. This is where the players come in, just over this uh, lookout area. That's why everyone's here. And frankly, Kansas City fans are very polite. Oh, here's some Lions fans. Can I hear a go, Lions? 
You're live on television. Oh, go Lions. Yeah, go Lions. Go Lions. Okay, people will get, they'll get more pumped up as we go along, and I'll be outside with them all day. Guys, back uh, to you. You caught them off guard a little bit. We'll, we'll give them some grace. Yeah. Jamie, we'll talk to you a little bit later. We appreciate you on the it. Spot. Yeah, you did. We we'll appreciate you so much, Jamie. Local 4 is all in on these Lions. Immediately following the 6 o'clock broadcast, our exclusive pregame show live from Kansas City's Arrowhead Stadium gets underway. Yeah, we're the only station giving you the full game experience with team analysis from NFL play-by-play -play announcer Mike Tirico and one-on-one -on -one interviews with quarterback Jared Goff and Lions general manager Brad Holmes. And then kickoff is at 820, followed by our live post-game coverage from the locker room and field. And we're also hosting an exclusive insider watch party at the Foling Warehouse in Hamtramck. If you aren't an insider, sign up tonight so you don't miss out on the next big event. Uh-oh, he missed. <laughs> <laughs> and because we all are, because we are all in on the Lions, Real of Fortune and Jeopardy are moving to MeTV for the night. If you want to check out those rerun episodes, you can find them over the air by turning to channel 4.3, or if you have cable, search the channel guide for MeTV. Now, Real of Fortune will be on at 7, followed by Jeopardy at 7.30. All right. Now to the weather, and after days of sweltering heat, relief has finally arrived as we take a live look outside from our Windsor Sky. That's actually downtown Sky Cam there. Uh, it's still a little bit muggy, but uh, a whole lot cooler today. Yeah, let's get over to Kim Adams. Kim, is there any rain out there? No, we had to watch out for it yesterday. We just have a couple sprinkles here and there, but otherwise we're in good shape tonight. No severe weather expected. You know, those fans that seemed a little subdued could be because they're standing in the blazing sunshine in Kansas City right now. It's 83 degrees, but they are very humid. Feels more like it's in the 90s. So it is an open air stadium. They'll have temps tonight uh, dropping down through the 80s and into the 70s and no chance of rain in Kansas City. 69 in Chicago, 74 here in Detroit. We'll zoom it a bit closer for you and get an eye on some temperatures. Probably feels a little warmer than this to you, especially in Mount Clemens. It's only 69 degrees, but it's humid. It's a little sticky and uncomfortable. 77 downtown. Exact track 40 radar, just a couple of showers. Uh, nothing too big, though, down in Monroe. That's where they had the severe weather last night. And right now, just some light rain. I'll be back with a look at when this humidity comes to an end coming up.